All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And sorry about the technical glitch that we just experienced. Uh, so my name is Chatur Vidhanagi, and I'm happy to present you with uh, one of the well-received uh, custom web application that we developed uh, back in 2020 when COVID-19 COVID was a, you know, a big thing. So uh, before moving into the demonstration, uh, let me uh, show you some, uh, I mean, two stories. So the first story is, uh, so John tested positive for COVID-19, not our John, someone else. And uh, John was in contact with Bob and Morton H in the daytime. And Morton H had a beer with Morton S in the evening. Morton H bought uh, some groceries on the way home and it was the cashier of the store. So th that's the first story. And the second story, uh, Leo tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, Leo met Lars in the daytime. Lars bought some groceries on the way home and it was the cashier of the store. So imagine having hundreds of hundreds of these kind of stories per day, which involves hundreds or thousands of people, maybe per, per story. And this was one of the uh, biggest problems governments had back in 2020 uh, when tracing COVID-19 cases and their contacts. So they can effectively, you know, quarantine uh, the possible uh, COVID-19 contacts or uh, uh, cases. So, uh, so this is when governments decided that uh, we can't do this on uh, paper, so we might need some uh, digital solution for that. So naturally, they they kind of turns into his and ask for a digital solution for this one. So in, then the uh, DHS to implementers they analyze these kind of stories and they realize that okay, this can be uh, easily solved with uh, with the tracker program. So we can define two programs which uh, where one would uh, capture the COVID-19 cases and then another program uh, where it would capture the COVID-19 contacts. Uh, and then we can create relationships uh, between uh, contacts and cases. Uh, so that effectively uh, created a digital solution for uh, tracking the cases and the contacts. So this is uh, something uh, that has uh, I mean, th this is something that has been done during that time. And I have an example tracker capture program, which kind of uh, mimic the uh, same thing. So I have uh, pre-registered uh, my COVID-19 case, uh, which, uh, which is John in this case. And then uh, I have another program. So I have basically two programs here, uh, case-based surveillance and then contract registration and follow. So under the uh, case uh, program, I have uh, John registered, and under the, under the contact registration, I have everyone else registered here, Nick Morton S, Morton H, and Bob. And I haven't done uh, the uh, two people from the uh, next story, so I will go ahead and um, uh, register them uh, to show you how uh, we would have done that. So then uh, here I have a new uh, COVID-19 case with Leo. So I will just switch to the case-based surveillance and do a registration. Uh, for the local case ID, I will just use the name because it's easy. Uh, and first name, last name, I will just use Leo and I can continue. And then I have, uh, uh, I mean, I have another person who is a contact uh, and his name is Lars. So I will go back and register Lars. And save it. And now I have uh, all the people that uh, needs to be registered. So I mean, this, this might be uh, done in a uh, massive scale when we are, uh, uh, you know, uh, practicing in an actual environment. So now, uh, based on the second story, uh, Lars has a contact with Leo, so I can simply add a relationship here. And Leo is the case, so I will just search for Leo. And I can add Leo as a uh, relationship for Lars. And then uh, it also says that, that uh, Lars uh, has been in contact with Nick. 
So then I can add another relationship. Uh, and in this case, uh, Nick is a uh, contact, he's not a case yet. So I will search in the contact registration and follow up program. Uh, Nick, and I can add him as well. So now we we have all, all the data required uh, on DHIS2, but uh, does it really solve the problem? I mean, it's in a tabular form, and uh, we have everyone in the database, and all the relationships are created, but still we can't figure it out that, I mean, uh, Nick is in the uh, both traces. Uh, I mean, he might be in more risk than others, so we can't uh, come into conclusions like that by just looking at uh, uh, tabular data. So, so that's uh, when we decided uh, uh, that we need uh, more uh, uh, visualizations that effectively uh, uh, visualize these kind of data, especially the relationships, uh, in a graphical manner. So that's when we uh, developed uh, this application called relationship tracing. So this can be used for uh, any uh, kind of relationship tracing use case, not just for COVID-19 contract tracing. So with this application, uh, we can save multiple visualizations. So for instance, I can go ahead and create a new visualization here. So I will just name it as new visualization. And the relationship that I would like to track here is uh, the uh, COVID-19 contacts and cases. So I will, I can select that one. And then as the third step, uh, I get the ability to create uh, or add new tracked entity templates of where I can, um, you know, uh, essentially define the graph nodes. Uh, so I, I will go ahead and create the uh, tracked entity template for cases here. Uh, so the template name would be case. And I can select the color for my graph node. And the program uh, from where this, this track entity instance would come is uh, COVID-19 case-based surveillance. And then I can optionally add a node label uh, to this graph. So I will just use uh, first name because it's easy uh, to track. And then uh, I have the uh, graph node for the cases. And then I will add the uh, graph node for the contacts. And then the program is going to be the COVID-19 contract registration and follow-up. And I will add the node label here, which is going to be the first name again. And finally, as the fourth step, uh, I can uh, define the uh, edges of the graph. And uh, from will be from, uh, I mean, the template for from will be the case, and template for to will be the context. And then I can uh, do more fine tunings here. Uh, I can hide the instances with no relationships, and also I can uh, opt in to have bidirectional arrows. I mean, that's, that's your preference. And then I can simply save my visualization. And once we are, we are in the visualization uh, dashboard, we get the uh, ability to select the enrollment start date and enrollment end date. Uh, this is important because there can be like thousands of cases, so we can we should uh, uh, limit the number of uh, it, uh, nodes that we will be displaying on the dashboard, so it is more manageable. Um, so uh, by default, it's going to select a one month range here. So I'm going to go ahead and click update. And now. Um, we can see that it, it visualizes uh, all the contacts and traces in a more presentable manner and uh, in a more traceable manner. And we also get uh, the options to click on one of the uh, contact or trace, uh, contact or case, and uh, view more information like date of birth and uh, several other track entity attributes. And also, we uh, provide the ability to open uh, this profile on track, uh, tracker capture. So we can do uh, other edits. Um, so back in Sri Lanka, uh, addition to uh, these capabilities, we even had like uh, uh, 
uh, the capability to trace by mobile number. So as you know, uh, mobile operators can track your location, not precisely, up to like to, uh, 20 meters accuracy. Uh, so uh, government kind of, uh, uh, you know, provided us with uh, data uh, from mobile operators uh, so that we can trace people based on the mobile number. Uh, so, I mean, if, if we register the track, tracker, uh, track entity instances with mobile number included as a track entity attribute, we could uh, simply uh, do a search and find the uh, find kind of all the locations that he or she has visited during the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so that's about the contact tracing application or the relationship tracing application. Um, any questions? No questions, thanks. Oh, there's one question. Ah, ask. Speak up, man. Uh, thanks uh, for a very nice app. I just want to say I usually don't pick up the groceries. That's my wife. So you can change that for next uh, presentation. Uh, no, but this is very nice. And uh, I'm just curious. Like one thing is like visualizing these things um, on a graph, like it just did there. But um, when you have all this information in terms of uh, relationships and so on, were you able to kind of create something more actionable for contact tracers? Like you could, could you produce like a list that they could print out and, and when they supposed to call people or could you kind of take this further and, and, and help contact traces more um, beyond just showing them a visual like that? Did, did, you, did you get into that kind of activities as well? Oh, yeah, more of these. Uh, yeah, for the app that we used in Sri Lanka, we kind of had that feature so we can uh, select one of the uh, case or a contact and trace up to like let's say we want to trace up to uh, five levels now so that capability was there but i mean we had to rely on the web api for doing that but possibly we could improve uh, those things by running graph algorithms directly on the database itself i'm sure that we can write uh, these uh, bfss or dfss directly on uh, using uh, postgres functions so uh, those kind of uh, possibilities were there, but we did not go into that level. We just relied on the uh, REST API for doing that kind of traces. Any questions? Anyone, any questions? Uh, someone just said, nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good. So last presentation, then we all can go for swimming. Uh, let me quickly just show. Okay, so um, just a bit of background. So this app, what I'm going to try to present is about cause of death um, with uh, doublet, with in including the ICD-11. Um, you can all hear me, right? Yeah, okay. So the, the concept behind was like the um, WHO had created the, the repository where people can actually search the ICD-11 from an API standpoint view, and then they can select it up. And in DHIS2, there were many countries where were developing their own custom form and other things for the cause of death module, where you have frame A, frame B, where you have to select all the cause and then click on underlining cause of things. And then like you have to create a dashboard and all the things. We also have a metadata package for um, MCCOD, medical certificate of cause of death. And in multiple countries, they were making it at different level, one where using 
custom app, one where we're using custom forms. So then we can say how best we can try to help countries to solve this problem. So what we tried to do um, uh, in collaboration with WHOHQ, that His Vietnam built a generic cause of death uh, app, which can be installed in any DHS system. And then like you can try to do the, all the data entry analysis and all the things by, and also export uh, easily. So you don't really require a programmer or anything for you can try to, to set all these things up. So first thing what I'll try to demonstrate to you is um, already installed application. And then I can go around how people can actually configure this one up. I'm not going to go into much details of all the things, but just show few key variables and all. So this is cause of that app in DHRS2, we just like installed. Like you go to the app hub and download and install cause of that app. That's basically it. Um, and after you configure all the things up, I'll just go for data entry for now. So I'm in this one particular facilities. This is a custom app. This is based on tracker. There was lots of argument why you have to choose tracker because like you also want to enable the um, sharing between uh, cause of death and CRVS system so that like they can get the um, uh, the death certificate, but like the Ministry of Health can give actually give the medical certificate so it can be used together. Uh, in the data entry app, so you just do the registration. There are two things. So people don't really have to know DHS to tracker like enrollment, incident date, and all kind of things. So here is just like date of reported and date of death. Um, this is a, a system ID which is automatically generated based on people who have configured it. Give first name, last name, mail, other things. And then this is frame A, frame B, which is very specified. WH also say like you never change frame A. So these are all the different options what you have. Um, we implement this system in multiple countries. Uh, Bhutan was the one of the things and Maldives they were straight trying to start. Um, in this one, so when I click on each cell, so this ICD coding tool is in somewhere else. It's not in your server. It is going and talking to the uh, WHO hosted the ICD coding services, where now if I want to select, I'm not a ICD-11 coder. I just know heart attack, shark attack or heart attack. So heart attack. So then like it gives you list of all the details and people can actually check what all the different things are. So you can just select one of the things based on it and then say so then like you can get most of the things from here okay um then like based on the icd coding we are actually categorize the things in the chapter the grouping for other visualization purposes if this is since it's a child and male so you have less options if it is a female then like you'll get the um, different options um and then like if it's a greater than some uh, some age you'll get also the, um, the, um, the maternal deaths and the other things in, in here. So I'm not going to go more into details. And this is also the medical certificate, which again, customizable, where people can actually just choose which field to be showed, what are the different things, they can include the logo by themselves. And if people want to have their own particular format, they can try to include that one. And after doing the data entry, like you want to, the whole purpose of this app was everything should be in the same app. Data entry, unaccord export, like where people want to analyze the data locally, uh, dashboards, and also the translation, all the things. So it's all combined into, into one particular place. So in the administration app, like once they have installed, they want to also change the, the, the certificate. Like you just say you want to change the logo or you want to do all the things that you can try to deal with it. If you want to add additional fields in your item, that can also be possible. Um, um, now I'm going to the dashboard. So this is a dashboard which is customizable, like which is based on, you have to run the analytics to get all this dashboard, but it's not using program indicator. We are actually using the analytic, analytics, uh, API analytics to get all this information. So that like people, if they delete the program indicators in the management section, this won't affect. So you have mortality by cause. Um, you can just select, OK, I don't want to use the, the TB. So then you can try to deal with all the different things. So if you want to include more fields, so then like you can get all 
And based on this, all the requirement was given to us by WHSQ. And like, I want to include all these fields in here. And then the things will get added on as, as it goes wrong. These data are the dummy data we just like entered to just to show this um, kind of graph and charts. Uh, mortality by non-communicable diseases, uh, mortality by uh, frequent cause of death, uh, by ICD death chapters. So all these things are in here. Um, um, again, TB, malaria, and all the things. And all the age breakups and all the things is based on the people who have done the data entry. OK, um, quickly, the translation. Uh, there are multiple types of translations. So first thing is on the, the data element side that we already know. Each and every data element can be translated into many languages. This is for the, the app screen itself. Like in DHS2, we have two things, right? One is app, what you see on the screen. And then one is on the database side. Database side has been already been handled. These are all the app side one. So these are all the variables. So English, and if you don't have your language, so you can select your language from here. So we have listed all different kind of versions of the language. So, sorry? Yep. That was the, the first one, I guess. So different type of Arabic. Uh, so you have list all the things. So just say let's take Arabic, add, and then you do your translation by yourself. Uh, this is only done by for the people who have the admin control or the a bit super user who can try to deal with. It. Once you are saved, so then like all your modules are there. That includes an card export, what you just see in the, the screen, the dashboard items, like in the like installation attribute. These are all the key fields which we are included. So then you can add your own language and translate these keys into your language. Sometimes, like we are also managing to, to give a few key translation. Uh, but like then they say, no, no, this translation is wrong. Uh, like we did it in Cambodia, like we one person entered the data. No, no, this is not really OK. This is some, means something else. So then like you want to change, you can also change it. So those are all the different fields. And these are like all the, the buttons and icons, what you see. So all those things are can be translated, like new registration, search. So it's up to what you want to try to deal with. OK, and then uh, people who knows about uh, Anacord, like we, this is the things where you want to try to export a particular data. So this will take a bit more time because we import a lot of data for all different kind of variable. So this will basically disaggregate the data by ICD code and the age and gender breakup, which can be downloaded into an Excel. And then like using the Anacord, uh, options you can try to do all that all the fields uh, that's basically the anacord format where in the top line you have this age breakup and in the column uh, or in the row is the icd code uh, for the whole country uh, and for uh, basically like this one so this is how the the code and it's the, the sex and then the all and the age breakup. this is the anacord format which you want to to download and use it for your anacord analysis No, 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 but this is exact for Anacord because Anacord is, they have this particular format and it has to be exactly like this one. We cannot change anything. <laughs> this was, but you can also export the data into other, other place. You can also use all these things in the, in your event uh, report online listing app or other things. It's still there. You just wanted to combine these features inside the app so that end user don't have to go to other place to deal with uh, many other things. So, Quickly, I just want to show you before the times run out. Um, sorry? Yes, yes, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, let me just stop present and present again. Just give me one second. So um, if you can just see, this one is the installation process. Um, too small, make it a bit bigger. Is it OK? So here, like what it happens, like when you first time install, you have a basic installation, uh, which includes everything, default installation. So you don't have to customize anything. But we always just say, don't do that one do the custom installation for a few reasons. 
the first thing is the first time like you have to set up the sorry but the first thing is you have to set up the um, the where is the icd code uh, tooling uh, icd code uh, 2 is loaded this is the global platform which is basically the who icd uh, icd.who.int that's the um, uh, ic recording tool where it is located but if you have used uh, ic record in your own docker or the server then you just give the url for your that particular places uh, this is the docker level installation so when you click on it will give you the, all the different details after you select that one then you can just choose whether you want custom or default um, just like going for the the custom one so when you click on custom what happens is you can just select in your uh, DHIS2, you already have tracker program where you already have first name, last name defined. You already have your uh, gender and, and the age defined. So we don't want when we install this to be replicated because I've seen in many places you have uh, age for uh, HIV, age for TB, uh, gender for HIV. I said, no, you have to use the same attribute for all the programs. Just don't create multiple attributes. There's the same principle around here. So you select, um, you choose what is that field is. Whether it may, maybe it's called uh, first name instead of last name. It's the family name or anything. So you can choose that one. Date of birth, um, age, uh, and all the things. And then you can add your additional field. For example, in Bhutan and other places, they want to include investigator name and all different kind of things. So then you can add your own additional field in your custom form or in your attribute, patient attribute. And then the next section is the form A, which cannot be changed, but you can add additional data element. Um, for example, where this person is, there, uh, the entire details of the investigator, uh, the address, the phone number, uh, where it was done. So you can add additional data element, but you cannot remove any of this data element. So that has been one of the things. In some places, they are allowed to, this is in frame B. In frame B, you have this, um surgery manner of death um the infant deaths and maternal death which are optional but now they're saying it's not optional everyone should need to include all these things but you are free to add additional options like wh or mch or or any other fields that you want to include any other data elements you're you're free to add all those things and then as like you create a DHS tracker program, you need to assign that one to where, whether it is only the hospitals or only in your um, um, provincial hospitals or central level hospital, you choose where you where are the, the medical cause of death coders are located. And other feature, other thing which you which is missing is in many of the installation is the, the groups who can actually change, who can view, who can do the data entry. And this has always sometimes has been missed in most of most of things. So that's why, like we have created this one. You have to select which are the user belong to admin group, which are the user are on the capture group, and which are the user on view group. Once you have done all these things, then like you just like install, it will install all the different components into your local DHRS2. And that's when you get uh, the, the screen or the demo which I showed you as an app. The first time when you install, it will be blank. It will automatically take you on there. So then you have to choose. If it's a custom, if it's a default ins uh, installation, then that means in your DHS2, there is no tracker program. So in your DHS2, if there is a tracker program, I always suggest don't go for default installation because you have to create all these different fields. Yeah, that's basically it. Presentation from me. Exact five. So any questions? Sorry? Okay. Um, okay. So that's in the uh, installation around here. Um, let me quickly go around. Okay. Um, I can show it to you because it's, uh, it's not here yet <laughs> or like in the, in the online. Because online, we have already put it up. Like here, we have an add button when the selection. So when you click, either you can select. Like what you're seeing around here in this particular area is list of all the attributes what you have in your own DHRS2. So you can select this one, or if you just say, oh, I don't have this attribute, I want to add attribute. When you click on this add button, the app will take directly to the attribute section or data element section. So if you, the data element is already there, you can select it. 
But if the data element is not there, then you can click on add. It will take you to data data element add manage uh, the 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 app. There you can add it up. Yes, like for example, around here, um, this one is in frame A, so you can add additional section, but you cannot change the cause of death A or these sections. But you can add, like say, the malaria section into here. This is a, a wrong uh, thing. So you don't add malaria section because of that, but like anything. <laughs> Okay. And then when you click on add, it will give you the, the option to select your data element, which you want to add, which you want to add into the WHSUOD module. So here, there is no need of programmer or anything. So it's just like one person who understands the cause of that. So that person can actually include all the things. So. Yes, um, one quick second. Um, I will share this uh, presentation. and. It's an online system. Stop presenting. Start sharing the screen. Just one second. Sharing. Um, no. Like that, I'll do this one. I'll also share this one in the, the Google chat and as well as the, uh, in the email. Just give me one second. Yeah. So if you just go for this place with the link which I said, dhs2.world slash whocod. So that will give you the username password is just there. So you can just like type the username and password, COD underscore demo, and demo at one, two, three, four. So there is a resources around here, which is a basically Word document, which describes the list of all the different things which you can download. Yes, and also you can select uh, the, the cost of that app and play around. Yeah. Um, the verbal autopsy, or is you you're talking about verbal autopsy, right? Um, the verbal autopsy is not, uh, because like that's that's not dealing with um, uh, I see the only main thing what we are working right now is with um, um medical certificate of cause of death, which is linked with ICD eleven. Uh, that was the uh, the whole functionality, but the um, uh, WHAHQ people are actually thinking around how best we can try to use the same approach for Robert Hopsey and also as for the mobility um, and for other other area. But this this app was only focusing on to help the coders to enter these details into DHIS2 and how best they can try to simplify installation procedure and analytic and then the export process. Uh, John, can you hear me? This is Nenad. Yeah. Hi, Nenad. Hi. Um, just, uh, I'm not sure whether I picked up the question, but if the question was related to Iris, um, I just wanted to add, uh, so this is Nenad Kostanczak from WHO Classification Terminologies team, so we have been collaborating with John in the development of this, um, that um, as part of the new release um, of the APIs for ICD-11 in the next year, we envisage to include also a new tool uh, which we call Doris for automated selection of underlying cores. And we are exploring with John and team to have this also embedded in the workflow of the app. So at the moment, when you look at the <clears throat> workflow, as John demonstrated, um, the cause of death, underlying cause of death assignment would be manual in accordance with the uh, form. Uh, and the the new uh, tool which we are developing is basically a digitalization of the ICD-11 mortality coding rules uh, so that you can uh, consider using uh, this tool for making, uh, for automated selection of the underlying course. 
um, and of course there would be different modalities uh, individually uh, certificate by certificate but i think the main option for deployment would be a kind of batch processing option where you run uh, you know a bunch of, of coded certificates uh, through the app which will be part of the api release uh, similar to what john has demonstrated with the ana code 3 which will which is the uh, tool for uh, analyzing ICD-11 or ICD code data for that effect. So that will be an additional feature. Um, we are also uh, working on a electronic WHO electronic death certificate, which includes some of these plausibility checks, which John already has implemented in the app. Um, so that because we can leverage their number of new features, which were not there before. Um, so at the moment, this is basically the electronic version of the paper who paper-based death certificate but we will have a release of the electronic death certificates and also embedded here uh, which will leverage a number of these uh, plausibility checks and other features which we can do now over thank you is that okay any more questions good enough thanks thanks a lot thank you oh, oh, um, oh just um Nenad, if you just sit on um sure there's one more question from the participants hi thank you uh, about the doris so we already uh, saw the anacord 3 uh, import from the icd 11 the WHO app and, and that is actually really a, a very good work uh, but the transition if the earlier we have the causes of death in icd 10 whether that is possible to convert into icd 11 because in country in bangladesh from i am from bangladesh and so there is icd 10 and soml both is in the system so there is a theoretically this can be convertible but uh, whether it is technically viable option or not yeah i think um, in order to ensure you know comparability of data sets obviously um, as you indicated, it will be important to have a crosswalk. Um, so usually our recommendation there is to make use of the um, mappings we already provide on the ICD-11 website. Um, if you can, I can post the link. I don't, I don't see the chat, but I, I will share it with, with John so that it can be distributed. Um, so what we basically recommend countries or users uh, to uh, use is um, any kind of mapping uh, should be done based on the uh, maps which we already provide. Um, however, these maps are quite detailed, so you will see that we are mapping there, um, you know, the 14,000 ICD-10 codes to the 17,000 statistical codes you have in ICD-11, um, but ICD-11 as you have seen, has much more granularity. So the kind of entities, so it's it's not only a classification, it's also terminology. So the clinician will find all the detail there. And the entities uh, are actually running up to one, 130,000 if you include synonyms and clinical terms, which are not codable uh, entities, but they are sitting under their respective codable entities, which are used for statistical reporting. So the map will provide you uh, these crosswalks between ICD-10 and ICD-11. However, um, it is very important that before you start any kind of mapping work uh, to really be clear for what purpose you do use the map. And maybe you should also consider running some kind of frequency analysis um, on uh, the actual used codes uh, in your data set vis-a-vis -vis ICD-10 so that you don't do uh, a mapping or crosswalk uh, based on our maps for the full scope but really for those uh, whatever 1000 or 2000 codes which really matter uh, and which explain whatever 90 percent or 95 percent of the uh, uh, cases in the particular country if you look at it from a mortality perspective or from a morbidity perspective so specifying the use case and uh, doing a kind of frequency analysis uh, before you start the mapping using the generics maps we provide on the website would be our recommendation. I hope that clarifies. Over. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's okay. Thanks. Thanks, Zainab. Thanks, participants. Uh, it's all okay. So look, so it's a whole long day today. So take some rest. So we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, tonight for the dinner. Yes, there is a gala dinner, and then after the gala dinner for the session is tomorrow morning nine o'clock. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot.